Hey guys, welcome back to Sony 365. Now look, check out this, the RX100 Mark 7. As much as smartphone photography keeps improving, you know, the performance gets incrementally better and better, the videography capabilities keeps improving and so on. That's great, but compare the results from even the best smartphones in the world with the results you'd get from an RX100 Mark 7 and I'm afraid, you know, there's no two ways about it. The results from the RX100 Mark 7 are in a completely different league because, you know, there are advantages there that you just don't get on smartphones. Well, until now, because actually what the Xperia Pro i promises to be is really game-changing stuff if it turns out to be true. Let me know in the comments section below what questions you want answered. Also, um, let's kind of flag up some of the things that I'm really excited about here, and I think you will be too, who I think this phone is for, and some of the things that I'm potentially a little bit worried about, maybe we need to just keep an eye on this, you know, keep ourselves grounded, okay? So without any further ado, let's just start off with what this phone is essentially not which is a Pro 2. It's easy to make that mistake because at first glance it does look similar. Obviously the camera tech over here on the back is you know, substantially different and we're gonna come onto that in a second. But this is not a Pro 2. The Pro has that mini HDMI port, this does not. That's all about being a monitor for your alpha camera and a number of other things. This is not that device. The Xperia Pro will continue to be on sale alongside the Pro i because the Pro i has an entirely different mission statement and it's for an entirely different target audience. And again, we're going to come on to that in a second. Um, this is more similar to a One Mark III, and that's kind of, I think, the best starting point because all the things that make the One Mark III such a great phone, that 4K 120Hz uh, refresh rate HDR OLED display, that's still there. The headphone jack is still there. It's a perfect phone for those who really are just completely into their gaming and they want the best possible experience. For those that absolutely love watching back 4K content, you know, all of that stuff that the Xperia 1 Mark III nails, that's the foundation. Where this phone goes above and beyond every other Xperia before it. And it looks like, on paper at least, every other smartphone before it is when it comes to the camera tech. Just before we get into the camera tech, bear in mind that the price here in the UK is £1,599. And that vlogging monitor, which I'm going to talk about shortly, um, is going to be an extra £169 on top of that. Um, there is also a £70 uh, leather case for the phone as well, which, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So just bear that price in mind. The other thing, of course, is that Sony tells me this will be on sale in early December. Uh, I take that with a pinch of salt uh, because this is not a normal year. And we've seen, haven't we, from the Xperia launches this year, uh, you know, things can vary somewhat, especially from region to region. So anyway, without any further ado, let's talk about this camera tech. Now let's get the boring news out of the way first. The 8 megapixel front facing camera, on paper at least, it seems to be the same nothing to write home about uh, tech that we've seen in the One Mark III and to some extent the One Mark II before it. So, okay, don't expect amazing results from the front facing camera. Obviously, as I've said before, I will have this in the studio soon so we can find out for sure if that's the case. But let's flip this over and look at the back because this is where we have the game changing uh, technology. So up the top there, the 16mm lens, the ultra wide, then where everyone's getting really excited, of course, the 24mm. Uh, this is the wide uh, 1.0 type with that amazing glass spherical lens. Cannot wait to test this out, guys. Um, again, make sure you let me know what questions you want answered in the comments section below. Then we've got the 3D time of flight sensor and the 50mm uh, standard lens at the bottom there. That would be great, actually, I imagine, for street photography. I mean, look, we're gonna get into this and I'll have it in the studio soon. You can probably tell, I cannot wait. Oh, and by the way, this is the world's first smartphone to include a 1.0 type image sensor with phase detection autofocus. So why is this device, by the way, I is for imaging, in case you uh, were wondering, why is it capable of giving better results than we've seen before um, 
from other smartphones, even from Xperia smartphones, and what does that actually mean in real terms? Well, the obvious starting point here is the sensor size is bigger and the pixel pitch is way bigger as well. So that means higher sensitivity. Uh, when it comes to authentic photography, uh, things like you know low light performance, it's really important that you know we can eke out the best possible results. Uh, this promises something incredible in that area. Also, when it comes to dynamic range, the ProEyes multi-frame processing should you know ramp it up a notch. But it, again, it's that that bigger sensor that's really helping us uh, with with the dynamic range and the other key area, depth of field. So we've talked, haven't we, about bokeh, how to get that beautiful creamy background when we're focused on something in the foreground that really does create that wow factor that professional look we are told that we're going to expect something really special in this department and again looking at everything i've been sent from sony you know images and video taken on this device okay it's looking good i'm going to reserve judgment until i have this device in the studio don't forget, of course, we've got that general kind of alpha magic on top, you know, when it comes to the speed and performance, 20 frame per second autofocus, tracking burst, um, anti-distortion shutter tech is at play here. Great for action shots, you know, we know the autofocus works so incredibly well, not just with humans and that eye focus, but also with our pets and animals as well. It's very, very cool stuff. The other thing worth noting here is that 90% of the field of view is going to be able to work with autofocus. That's actually improved on previous Xperia models too. So yeah, this is going to be an absolute beast when it comes to autofocus. No surprises there. So when it comes to photography then, we're expecting big things. But when it comes to the videography side of things here, we're expecting even more. Because on top of all the, the Cinema Pro stuff that we know and love, i.e., 21x9 movie recording in the Cinema Pro app, um, powered by Cine Alta, of course, 4K HDR, 120 frame per second recording, all those color settings like the Venice look that we absolutely love, the color accuracy which we love, uh, all of that is there. But what is new here is this Videography Pro um, approach. Um, Sarah Dietschy, a link to her channel in the video description below, she's been lucky enough and she fully deserves it. I actually rate her very highly. Uh, she's been lucky enough to get hold of one of these and put it through its paces. So again, check out her work there as well. So this device, the Xperia Pro I, is perfect for those of us who are into vlogging, especially those of us who are doing that on the go and we want a minimalist setup without loads and loads of clobber weighing us down. This could be really, really something. So if you are a vlogger and that's the main reason for going ahead and either exploring or buying the Xperia i, then I suggest you're going to really want to look at the vlogging monitor that you can buy for this £169. Then you're really going to get the most out of this device and probably, although the mic setup is really good here for getting rid of the noise you don't want and focusing on your voice, you're probably going to want to get a proper mic, a dedicated mic, which you can put on the top here. Um, then you're going to get the ideal setup. This is really, really powerful stuff for vloggers on the go, as well as the you know enthusiasts among us who want to get absolutely beautiful cinematic footage. Again, really strong slow motion as well. I mean, there's so much to get into, but I want to wait until I have the uh, the phone in the studio here. By the way, I didn't mention that 4K HDR 120 frame per second video recording capability is a world first on the smartphone too. So yes, there is a lot to be excited about here. So hardware wise, you have this extra shortcut key here to launch any app. It's worth noting that by default, it launches the Video Pro app. Uh, but you can change that to whatever you want, which is fantastic. You've also got the shutter button here, which is textured a bit like the RX100 Mark 7, a triple eight Snapdragon chipset, of course, um, 4,500 milliamp hour battery as well. Now, maybe this is the point where I talk about some of the things that I'm a little bit potentially concerned about and I want to pay particular attention to when I have this device in the studio. Number one is battery life, 4,500 milliamp hours 
is that enough? It's only just barely enough with the One Mark III. I think it is enough for the One Mark III, but only just. I also am slightly concerned about that Triple Eight chipset. Now, my One Mark III never overheated. I had it for uh, just over two weeks, actually. Um, I didn't have to worry about that. It never shut down, but this Xperia I is potentially going to be pushing that chipset even harder. So that's another thing to worry about there potentially, and I will test for that extensively when I have the device. I'm not worried about the price at this point if the device delivers on its core promises, which are ultimately to level up smartphone photography and actually give the competition a new standard to chase. If we can achieve that here with this device, yeah, I don't have a problem with the price. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I think we can all agree these are very, very exciting times for Xperia fans. And it has me even more excited about the direction of travel here for the Xperia division and what the Xperia 1 Mark IV could be all about. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching.